All right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Joy Owens. I am the education manager for the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. We're going to give it a moment or two for more people to join in on the live. Uh, but once we have a, a good amount, we'll go ahead and get started with this Earth Day celebration. Um, I'm so excited to be with you guys today and to talk all about how elephants shape our planet and shape our world. All right, it looks like we've got a pretty good group. So uh, for those just joining us, again, my name is Joy Owens. I am the education manager for the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. And thank you so much for joining us to celebrate uh, this Earth Day. Um, so today's event kicks off a four week series called Party for the Planet, uh, ends on Endangered Species Day on May 21st. So each week tune into our social media channels where we will be challenging you uh, to connect with and protect your local habitats. Uh, but today we are going to focus on how important elephants are as a species to our planet. Uh, if you have questions along the way, go ahead and drop those in the comments section and we will be taking questions at the end of today's program. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee, uh, we have a twofold mission. Of course, we exist to take care of elephants uh, that are retired from zoos and circuses uh, so that they can live out the rest of their life in a habitat dedicated to their care. Uh, but we also believe in education, which is why I'm talking to you today. We believe it's really important to educate about the needs of captive elephants, but also the global crisis facing elephants in the wild. The Elephant Sanctuary is a 2,700 acre refuge that exists in a small town called Hohenwald, Tennessee, which is south of Nashville. Uh, we are the largest natural habitat refuge dedicated solely to elephants uh, in the United States. And most importantly, as an accredited sanctuary, uh, the habitats where our elephants live are not open to the public. Um, and all of our elephants are retired from their long lives in the public eye. Uh, if you wanna know more about each of our elephants or the work the sanctuary does, you can visit us at elephants.com. Uh, but today, we're going to turn our eye to wild elephants, starting with the three elephant species that exist with us in the world today. Now, you may have grown up learning that there are only two species of elephants, Asian and African, uh, but there are actually two distinct species of African elephants. Now, at the sanctuary, we have African savanna elephants and Asian elephants, uh, but there is a third species, the African forest elephant. Now, all of these elephants are related. Uh, they all have things in common, like being rather large and having a long trunk, uh, but they are genetically distinct behaviorally distinct, and of course, they look really different as well. Uh, if you are ever watching our live streaming LA cams and want to know if you are looking at an Asian elephant or an African savanna elephant, there are a few tips and tricks that can help you out. Uh, looking at an elephant's ears is probably the number one way most people tell elephants apart. The African savanna elephants have the largest ears, probably what you think of when you think of an elephant, while Asian elephants have the smallest ears. Uh, we also have a difference when we're talking about tusks. Both African savanna and African forest elephants are all able to grow tusks, whereas in the Asian species, only the males have them. And a super secret top tip, uh, at the sanctuary, we have all female elephants, so none of our Asian elephants have tusks and all of our African savanna elephants do. Now, all three of these species are critically important to those native habitats that they live in, and they all live in unique habitats. So let's talk about where those places are. Asian elephants can be found throughout Southeast and Central Asia, so places like Myanmar, India, Thailand, and Sri Lanka. Asian elephants are a bit of habitat generalists, so they don't mind if their habitat is forested or a grassland. Uh, they are typically uh, seeking out habitats with a large amount of vegetation. That's the number one most important thing to them. Uh, in the African species, their habitats are a little bit more distinct 
So African savanna elephants, their habitat is right there in their name. They occupied the savannas or the grasslands of sub-Saharan Africa. And then African forest elephants, again, their habitat is in their name, makes it really easy for you. They occupy the tropical rainforest in the Congo River Basin in Central Africa. In fact, the red colored area you're seeing on your map is the only place in the world you can find African forest elephants. Uh, they do not exist in any form of captivity that we know of, uh, which is why we don't have any here at the elephant sanctuary. Now, again, these habitats are distinct and unique, but what uh, ties them all together is that these habitats depend on their elephant residents uh, for their health and for their function. The reason for this is elephants are a keystone species. A keystone species is any species, any organism that plays really an outsized role in their wild habitat. Uh, so not only are they affecting themselves, they're affecting the overall function of their habitat. And most importantly, what we know about keystone species is that if they are removed from a habitat for any reason, uh, you will see ripple effects and often negative ripple effects throughout the habitat. This is why it's critically important to protect elephants in their wild spaces uh, because we're not just protecting elephants, we're talking about protecting the health and function of an entire wild space. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the three main ways elephants are keystone species in their wild habitats, starting with uh, their ability to engineer the environment around them. So elephants, as we know, are the largest animals that live on land, and just by their sheer physicality, their strength, and their size, they can change the physical uh, space around them. African savanna elephants are often called savanna makers for this reason. Uh, with their foraging habitats, they may rip up small bushes and shrubs, knock down trees, or remove branches and open up the canopy. Now, on this face, you may think this sounds destructive. How could this possibly be good for the health of the ecosystem? But in fact, the savanna is meant to be a grassland. It's meant to be dominated by low growing plant species like grasses. Uh, and these grasses, of course, provide food, shelter, and camouflage for other animals. So savanna elephants are removing those uh, competing plants, those taller trees and bushes that may shade out those grass species, making it a less hospitable environment for many other savanna dwelling animals. Elephants are also providers in their natural habitats. Uh, elephants have a keen sense of smell due to that really, really long trunk and can smell food and water from 12 miles away and can even detect water underground. Uh, this is critically important because they become really skilled at finding water even during the dry season or drought. Uh, African forest and African savanna elephants especially will use those long tusks, those specialized incisor teeth, to dig in the tough, dry ground and soil uh, and essentially create new watering holes. Of course, this gives them access to water, but also provides for any other animals sharing the habitat space with them. But by far my favorite way elephants are keystone species is that they are gardeners of their wild spaces. Uh, now we all know elephants are herbivores, but they even get a more special name as mega herbivores. They eat 200 to 300 pounds of plant food each day, and they are terrible at digesting this food. What this means is that often fruits and tough uh, outer shells of seeds will pass through an elephant, but they won't be fully broken down. They'll stay in the elephant's dung, which is a nutrient-dense packed compost uh, right there for the seed, and they'll be replanted. Not only this, but elephants are migratory animals, so often they're carrying these seeds many miles from their originating point. Now, of course, elephants live with other herbivores uh, in their wild spaces, but there's not an animal that eats nearly as much as an elephant. And scientists have already identified a few tree species that may suffer greatly if elephants disappear. This includes the yellow mulberry in Central Africa and the elephant apple, aptly named, in Central Asia. 
So really important that we protect elephants in their wild spaces. They're critical to the health and function of their ecosystems. And we don't fully understand or know or can predict what will happen if elephants disappear from the, from the wild. Uh, now it's also critically important on this Earth Day that we talk about protecting habitats that are closer to home. Elephants, or sorry, humans, just like elephants, are a keystone species. In fact, uh, you could argue we are the ultimate ecosystem engineers. We have a huge responsibility for the natural world around us. So all month long through May 21st, we are going to be challenging you to explore and protect your local habitats. If you wanna learn more about each of those challenges and sign up for emails from the Elephant Sanctuary, you can go ahead and text ELEPHANT to 66866 uh, and that will sign you up for emails where you can learn more. But even more, we're gonna give you some takeaway actions that you can enact today. So here are some ways we can be a responsible keystone species. Uh, we can explore the natural habitat around us. Take a walk in your neighborhood or in your local park. Identify what species are native, what are invasive, and where can you work to create a healthier habitat for your native wildlife. Uh, you can eat like an elephant. Choose a plant-based meal when you can. As we know, plant-based diets lower our carbon footprint and lower our impact on the earth. We can all work together to protect our natural habitats by cleaning up our neighborhoods, our highways, our local parks, or places that are important to us. And maybe my favorite is we can all work together to reduce our waste by participating in recycling programs, but also by getting creative and upcycling waste products around your home to make crafts and art pieces. Uh, we'll actually be challenging you to do each of these things over the next four weeks. So follow us on social media for more information about each weekly challenge. And as a bonus, if you participate in a weekly challenge and you tag us on social media, you will be entered to win a reusable tote bag from the Elephant Sanctuary. So I hope you will all participate in our party for the planet. And our next live event will be on May 21st. Now, I know I just threw a lot of information at you all at once. So I want to spend the next 15, 20 minutes we have of this live event answering uh, some of your questions. So again, please put those questions in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. So I see we already have some coming in. Someone commented that wolves are a keystone species. Absolutely, wolves are one of the most well-known keystone species. Uh, and we've all seen what happens when they were removed from the Yellowstone environment. It changed dramatically. Uh, and that's why it's really encouraging that there are programs that are advocating for the reintroduction of wolves in North America. Um, so wolves are a great example of a keystone species closer to home. Uh, someone asked, can we visit your sanctuary? Well, you can't visit the sanctuary where the elephants live, but you can come visit me at our Elephant Discovery Center in Hohenwald, Tennessee. Uh, this is an interactive museum space in downtown Hohenwald, uh, where we have our live streaming Ellie cams, uh, where we have lots of exhibits about the history of the sanctuary, how we care for elephants, and we would love to see you there. Uh, we're open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 to 5. For. Someone else asked, what is the life expectancy of an elephant? Well, on average, uh, it's pretty common for elephants to live into their 50s and 60s, uh, but we have had elephants who have lived much longer. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Shirley, who lived to be 72 years old, an amazing lifespan, especially for a captive elephant. Someone else asked, how many African forest elephants are left in the wild? Thank you so much for this question. Uh, you may have seen recently uh, that African forest elephants are now listed as critically endangered. Uh, we think 
it's really hard to estimate, but we think 15 to 20,000 African forest elephants remain in the wild, but they are incredibly hard to count uh, because of that habitat we talked about. That Congo River Basin where they live is a dense and lush tropical rainforest with a really thick closed leaf canopy. Uh, so it's only recently that scientists and conservationists have really been able to do population studies, but of course these are still estimates. African savanna elephants are also endangered. We estimate around 300,000 uh, African savanna elephants remain in the wild and uh, Asian elephants are critically endangered as well. If you want to know more about the conservation status of each elephant species, tune into our next live event on May 21st. That is Endangered Species Day, so we are going to talk all about the endangered uh, status of each elephant species and how we can protect those elephants and hopefully get those population numbers back up. Oh, we have a lot more questions coming in. So let me work my way through here. What is the best way the average person can help elephants in the wild? I love this question because I think a lot of us think that if we don't live in elephant native habitat, then surely there's not much we could do to protect those wild elephants. But the truth is a lot of our daily choices uh, have an effect on those wild spaces. Habitat loss is one of the greatest threats facing elephants in the wild. And there's lots of reasons for this. Our human population keeps expanding and our need for agricultural products keeps expanding. So things you and I use every day, paper products, coffee, chocolate, even your shampoo may have ingredients that come from wild elephant habitats. So what do we do about that? Well, we shop smart. We choose sustainable products when we can. Products that don't have palm oil or have sustainable palm oil. We choose shade grown coffee. Shade grown coffee ensures that we're not destroying elephant habitat in order to get our morning cup. And we choose sustainably forested paper products. There are all sorts of seals you can look for when you're shopping. I really like the Forest Stewardship Council, the Rainforest Alliance, and the uh, Sustainable Palm Oil Roundtable. Look for these uh, seals when you're shopping and you know you're making a more sustainable choice for elephants. All right, let's see what else we have. We have a question about how many elephants are in captivity in the United States and could they all be sent to sanctuaries? Well, currently uh, estimates are there are over 400 elephants living in captivity in North America. Now, I don't think we could confidently say that the elephant sanctuary in Tennessee could house all 400 of those elephants tomorrow, uh, but we do always stand ready to accept a new elephant to the sanctuary, and we're very hopeful that we can do that soon. Uh, we are seeing public uh, sentiment shift towards uh, wanting elephants to have a more full and healthy life, uh, so there are all things we can look for when we are visiting places that may house elephants, uh, so you can make an informed choice. Uh, what we recommend at the sanctuary is ensuring you're visiting a place that has multiple elephants. These are very social animals, so they need others of their species to interact with for their physical and mental health. We also encourage people to look at how much space an elephant has and what type of interaction are they having with the public. So we really discourage hands-on interaction with elephants. These are very large, intelligent, wild animals, and we need to respect uh, their strength and their intelligence. So those are all things I encourage you to look for if you are visiting a place uh, that may house elephants, you can also look for, again, accreditation seals are really helpful. So if you are visiting a zoo, we encourage you to look for um, an AZA certification, that is Association of Zoos and Aquariums. If you're visiting a sanctuary, we encourage you to look for GFAS accreditation, which is Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. Uh, and the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee is actually certified and accredited by both of those organizations. Someone else asked, what's the most interesting emotional or intelligence trait I have seen in elephants? What I find most fascinating about elephants is their interpersonal relationships uh, and their compassion for one another. Elephants in the wild uh, grow up in family herds. 
So the herd is made up of all adult females and then all juveniles. So that's all the boys and girls, newborns up to teenager elephants. And this herd is not just a functional group for safety. It's not just about safety and numbers. They have these complex backstories and dramas. Uh, they have a hierarchy that is uh, shifting and fascinating. Uh, and the way they look out for each other, the way they work together to protect those babies, protect those younger elephants. It's not just mom's job to take care of her calf. It's the entire herd's job to protect each other. Uh, that is one of my favorite things about elephants is seeing the way they interact in their family groups. Ooh, someone asked, is there a list of sustainable items to purchase for helping keep elephants and other animals safer in the wild? Uh, so again, I would reiterate uh, some of the things that you can purchase or, or be aware of when you are purchasing are things like shade grown coffee. Uh, we sell shade grown coffee in our gift store or gift shop online, but you can also find it in your local grocery store. Look for the Rainforest Alliance seal. It's a little green frog. It's really easy to spot. Um, again, if you are buying paper products, choosing 100% recycled paper is a really great option. Um, and then when you are looking at all sorts of products, looking to see if they contain palm oil. Uh, palm oil is very ubiquitous. It's in everything from shampoo to chocolate, uh, but palm oil production can be really, really harsh on Asian elephant habitat specifically. Um, a lot of palm oil plantations may completely clear cut a habitat, which makes it really difficult for elephants to share that space, obviously, they're often pushed out of those habitats. So those are kind of the three main call outs, call outs I would have is recycled paper products, shade grown coffee, and avoiding palm oil when possible. All right, uh, let's see what other questions we have here. If we want to donate in honor of Earth Day, where would we go? I love this one. You can go to elephants.com, click the donate button in the top right corner. We are in the middle of our spring campaign and we are a 501c3 nonprofit. So we are fully donor funded uh, and we need your generous support to do what we do. So if you are interested in donating, please go to elephants.com uh, and click donate. Let's see, how do elephants handle death? Uh, I know one recently passed away. Uh, this is another amazing, fascinating thing about elephant intelligence. Um, so I'm sure some of you have heard about elephants mourning or, or elephants showing signs of grief. Of course, we are not able to uh, read an elephant's mind or ask them what they're thinking or feeling, but we can certainly read and understand their behavior. Uh, so we might see an elephant become more withdrawn as they are grieving. Maybe they uh, have a, a lesser appetite or maybe they're less interested in kind of the social day-to-day -day lives of the other elephants. Now, I would interpret this as signs of grief. Um, so it's certainly something scientists have observed in elephants uh, in the wild and in captivity. I'm scrolling through to see if we have any other questions I have not answered. Uh, is there a drought in the Tennessee in area? And if yes, how did it impact the habitats? Uh, I think we have had the opposite of a drought in Tennessee. Tennessee, especially where we are in middle Tennessee, is incredibly rainy. Uh, so we often deal with the opposite. We sometimes have some light flooding, um, nothing too serious. And I will say it seems, uh, especially the Asian elephants really enjoy those rainy periods when the creeks fill up and when their ponds fill up even more. Lots of splashing around and swimming ensues. Uh, and we are lucky that we have such a large expansive habitat space because we know we have plenty of food resources for the elephants. We have plenty of natural water resources, but we do also supplement that food and water as necessary. 
Do all North American sanctuaries collaborate? Uh, there is only one other accredited sanctuary in North America. Performing Animal Welfare Society is located in California. Um, and we are, you know, collaborators. We uh, stay in touch with them. We are kind of the only two groups in the US doing what we do. Now, there are some places that will use that word sanctuary without necessarily being accredited by the Global Federation of animal sanctuaries and perhaps without operating the same way we do. That's why we really encourage people to do their own research when they are visiting a place. Uh, one tip is you can read the one and two star reviews on Yelp or TripAdvisor, whatever your preferred platform is. Uh, if there are animal welfare concerns, those are typically where you're going to find them in those one or two star reviews. Oh, I've had a couple of questions about how long elephant gestation is, so I promise I wasn't um, forgetting that. Uh, that is one of my favorite questions, especially from the students I usually talk to. Uh, incredibly, elephants are pregnant for up to two years. So gestation can take 22 to 24 months. Another reason uh, it's critical to protect elephants is they can't repopulate their numbers super quickly. They're investing five to seven years in each calf from birthing to raising and nursing them. Uh, I think we are going to make this our last question. Uh, if you do have more questions, please put those in the comments and we will always uh, go back and answer those after the live is over. But uh, what kind of qualifications are needed to work at the sanctuary? Well, first, I would point out that uh, there are many different types of jobs at the Elephant Sanctuary. Uh, so, for example, I am an educator, and my background and training is in formal education and conservation education. Uh, so, if any teachers are on the call and you're looking to make a career change, we do have a full-time education and outreach team. Uh, of course, if you are more interested in working with the elephants, being a caregiver or a veterinarian, all of our care staff have experience in animal care, uh, so we really recommend getting that hands-on experience, whether that's interning at a zoo, a wildlife rescue center, another sanctuary. That's the kind of qualifications we're looking for when we uh, hire care staff. Uh, and there's still more jobs than that. We have marketing and communications. We have an entire facilities and maintenance team that maintains our 2,700 acres, our 30 miles of fencing, and our three barns. Uh, so no matter what life path or career path you are on, uh, there might be a fit here for you at the Elephant Sanctuary. All right, well, I think I've made it through most of your questions. Again, if you have more questions, uh, you can either find the answer at elephants.com. You can leave them in the comments and we can go back and answer them later. But thank you all so much for joining me on this lovely Earth Day. Again, please stay tuned to our social media channels. I'll go back to those so you can uh, write them down and follow them if you need to. Uh, but stay tuned for our weekly challenges for Party for the Planet uh, to help connect and protect those local habitats. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much for joining me. And I will let you all enjoy the rest of your evening or morning or afternoon, no matter where you are tuning in from. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>